Awesome. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the community meeting for December. Today, Anush will give us, will get us up to speed on what's new in the workloads that NAL has working uh, through Torchmail IR. We'll have some brief updates to the random number generation support in the Torch to Linal pass. Sean will give us an update on the work that he's been doing integrating Torch Dynamo. Um, and lastly, I'll talk a little bit about the new LVM update process that we have been following for the last month and a half. First, a few reminders. Our community meeting is the first Monday of every month at 9 a.m. Pacific. So that would be this meeting that you're in right now. And the goal is to give the community a high level overview of what has changed in the last month uh, in Torch Malaya. All other Mondays at the exact same time, we have our developer hour, which is Focus more for technical discussions. There is no agenda, it's not recorded. And the developer hour is a great place for people to come and ask questions or uh, bring up new ideas that they have for features that they would like to see in Torsional Era. Every Thursday, there is also office hours from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. Pacific, hosted by me. And the idea for office hours is to have a space for people to ask entry-level questions about Torchmail IR, as well as get help debugging their help implementations. So if you're really struggling to find all the bugs in an implementation, hop on over and uh, we'll tackle it together. Lastly, there is our Discord, uh, which is pretty active. So um, it's the best place to stay up to date with whatever's happening in Torchmail IR. So make sure you join that. These are some statistics on the commit activity in the last four weeks. So this is since, since November the 4th. We've had 79 commits in the last 28 days, which is quite nice. Um, it's really nice to see the widespread of contributors to Torch and LIR. So thank you everyone who has been contributing in the last four weeks. Now on to the updates. Uh, Anush, would you like to update us on the new workloads you have working? Yeah, uh, so this is the continuation of uh, Stable Diffusion. Um, we've, we have uh, Stable Diffusion working and packaged um, to work in like a uh, out of the box scenario. Uh, so we're setting up a, a website there, uh, Shark.sd, but in, in general, uh, it, it's not specific to aim the RDNA GPUs. Um, it'll, it'll just work on um, CUDA, uh, Mac, M1s, um amd gpus uh but the good thing to see is this like a one click um application that anyone on a windows platform can use um and uh, linux and mac uh, so in the next week we'll polish it up a little more uh but it's just going to be a simple uh, exe on windows that has touch uh embedded with uh eerie and nords tuning for shark um that just makes it uh, you know uh, really pleasant to use. Uh, it's good to see like a final end product of TouchML IR, uh, where right now there are like artists using it, and they're like, "Hey, I just downloaded this and I double clicked, and I'm using it. It's working this way." Um, so the 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 kind of uh, customers we are getting are slowly you know evolving from like um, you know hardcore um, machine learning enthusiasts to I'm just here to create prompts and AI art, and I just downloaded this, and I have this GPU. That's all they tell us, and uh, so it's really nice to see that. Um, and uh, just thanks to everyone in the community for getting us here. Uh, we are adding. Uh, we have Stable Diffusion two working. We have um, uh, a lot of um, optimizations in the pipeline uh, for uh, various hardware, uh, and uh, not just on the. Um, AMD GPUs, uh, we have some on uh, M1s uh, that should be coming up. So if you have large um, GPU M1s, uh, you'd see significant, um, you, you should you should see uh, a good performance improvement over MPS. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I just wanted to uh, say it's uh, exciting to see like an end product with, uh, with Touch on the um, Was there a question? Yeah. Um, is the Dynamo path? Oh, oh, this is this is the original uh, 
TouchScript plus XPath, um, but we do have a short Dynamo integration, which is based off of uh, Ramirez and Sean's uh, Torch Dynamo integration. Um, but we we plan to enable that as soon as possible. Um, we we do want to. Uh, th there are a lot of um, things that we have to make better, um, and uh, especially in terms of um, like when you change guidance values and and image sizes and certain other things, like how do we recompile and make it more efficient and, and uh, speed that up? We're going to be doing a pass on that in the next few weeks. Uh, right now, there's nothing concrete we have to say this is what we need to do, but but that's going to be a uh, focus for us so that uh, we can use touch and layer both in the Dynamo path and the regular path, um, regular with make effects uh, path, um, so that it's it's uh, it's just uh, you know. It's just invisible behind the scenes. You just change your slider knobs and touch them like it's doing its thing, uh, doing its thing in the background. Um, cool. Any any questions on the first one? Um, that, you know, happy to answer any, any um, questions on it. Uh, give it a try. We'll, uh, you you can run it on um, CUDA, uh, Vulkan NVIDIA, Vulkan AMD, and Vulkan Mac and CPU. Uh, those are those are the, all the backends that we do test uh, in FP16 and FP32. Um, if there's any variation of it that you'd like to see, please let us know on Discord. Uh, we have a team that just you know can enable it uh, pretty fast. Cool. Um, and the next one is we are uh, working with uh, you know uh, stable diffusion training. Uh, we have some customer engagements where we are uh, doing training through Toxamal IR uh, for stable fusion. Um, yeah. And this is this is on the other end of the spectrum. Uh, we do have the, um, like, this is for large scale training uh, of stable diffusion itself and, um, and targeting, um, you know, um, custom silicon and, and various other uh, things that they have. But, at the minimum, uh, we'd be able to get a stable diffusion training with CPUs and GPUs as a like a reference uh, loading through Tashamal IR, but then that will get targeted to various um, backends. Uh, any any thoughts or questions, folks? Cool. Um, and then we do have a few other workloads like um, you know Distill Bird T five. Um, uh, I think there are some variations of it that we're just continually going to keep improving. Uh, this is kind of like the oxygen sucking <laughs> entity, but uh, but we do have other models that we're continually adding for various customers. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for the update. Yeah, this is pretty exciting. Uh, one, the extensive support on backends that you're able to run things on. And uh, I think getting big models training with Orchimal IR is a big milestone. So I'm excited to see this stable diffusion training running end to end. Yeah. Uh, this is a list of the new ops and improve ops uh, over the last month uh, on all three backends of Torchimal IR. Uh, and so it gives a bit of a, a sense of the work required to get the complex workloads that Anush mentioned working. Uh, these are, you know, these contributions are crucial to getting things to work end to end. And so, thank you, everyone who has been working on them. Now, on to the updates for the random number generation in Torch to Linal. So, the way that random numbers are generated when lowering to the Linal uh, pipeline has been improved in a couple of ways. So the way that seeds get generated in your IR when you have something that requires random numbers is that uh, calls to a torch dialect op called get next seed get inserted in the graph. And handling for this op get next seed was previously only done on the ref backend, which meant that if you wanted to use random numbers, you were sort of restricted to run things on the ref backend. However, now we have a new pass called Torch Conversion to ML Program uh, added by Vivek from Nod. And in this pass, the Torch Get Next Seed op gets converted 
to the ML program dialect instead. So <laughs> this allows anyone who has a backend that knows how to handle a null program to be able to handle the random number generation. So this should open up uh, the support for a lot more backends. The second improvement is that the algorithm used to generate random tensors was also improved. Previously, we were using a very simple linear congruential generator, and it was very limited when you would create like two random tensors. They were very similar to one another, resulted in very strange behavior when you would combine random tensors in calculations. And now we're using a very different, but still very simple algorithm called Square64 that has a much better random behavior. So for people using the Linux path, you should see good improvements on the quality of the random numbers. Any questions on this slide? Cool. So looking forward, the big plan for Torch MLR is to have really good support for Torch Dynamo, and Sean will give us an update on this in a bit. But this essentially sets up sets us up really nicely to align in the direction that PyTorch 2.0 is gonna take, where Torch Dynamo plays a very key role. So I'll now hand it over to Sean to give us some other updates on this. Yeah, thanks, Ramiro. Um, and also, thank you, by the way, for uh, running the community meeting. That's previously been my responsibility, but Ramiro has stepped up to uh, take over more ownership uh, of the project generally. And so I'm really happy to see see that. Um, so on PyTorch 2.0 was uh, announced last week. Um, there's this big uh, blog post on it referenced from this forum post I link here. Um, and uh, the, the short answer, is, the, the short version is that really nothing changes for what we're doing since we've been very closely aligned with all the folks doing this work in the first place. Um, so our long-term roadmap is fully aligned with everything that they're doing and all the key pieces that we um, are relying on for our long-term roadmap are actually mentioned often as headline features in the PyTorch 2.0 announcement. And so the um, I'm I'm really excited to just see the work on this continue. Um, so uh, the decompositions work. Uh, the the really cool thing about all of this is that it ties in very closely with a lot of the other work that's being done in PyTorch. So for example, the Torch inductor um, compiler backend that's being built in Upstream, Sianush, um, the the Torch inductor support, everything that's being done in that context. For decompositions or prim torch decomposition or functionalization or dynamic shapes, all of that actually directly feeds back into our roadmap and helps us. So I'm really excited to just see, you know, kind of all the, you know, all all the all the cats are kind of running in the right direction and and you know there's a some a really good uh, momentum now. So um, the cats being. Uh, PyTorch and us, <laughs> right, um, a lot, uh, really work, you know, going in exactly the same direction. So uh, that's really, uh, really great. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so on that note, so Torch Dynamo, since the last community meeting, I believe it landed in upstream uh, PyTorch. And so uh, that means it before it was like a packaging issue for us to actually have a dependency on it um, but that landed upstream and so uh, we added support for it so there's a we have this uh, decorator make simple dynamo backend um, you can see more details in the pull request which uh, sort of gives you uh, it does it, it it's uh, by no means like the end story for uh, our torch dynamo support but it's going it's a, at least a first step that makes it really easy to enter to have it work with the torchmlir.compile API. Um, so we have, um, as listed here, we have um, all like basically all the goodies that are that the new PyTorch 2.0 um, uh, effort uh, brings. Uh, basically, our to-do items to to connect with, um, and so we are 
uh, we are basically just, you know, all green to just keep pushing on all that stuff and making our roadmap a reality. So I'm super excited. Next slide. Okay, cool. So let me actually uh, give give a demo here. Let me see how I can best do this. Uh, which one of these is it? <clears throat> All right. Let me go ahead and uh, share my screen. Can folks see this? Uh, I'll take that yeah. as a yes. Okay. Um, so this is our uh, standard ResNet 18 example that um, runs a ResNet 18 inference. Uh, this is one of our first examples that we've just kept as we've added new support. Just showed the new features on this. So here you can see that it's literally like like the so using the make sim, simple dynamo backend uh excuse me um using the make simple dynamo backend decorator basically all you need is like one line to, in torch myr to get your desired uh output either linux on tensors mhlo tosa or the torch dialect in the backend contract form and then you can plug in your backend whatever you want here that you know compiles and loads it up and then uh, deal with the fact that Python returning multiple values is a little weird, um, but really this is just one line here, loaded, loaded that forward. You just call into your, whatever your backend compiled the result into, and you're done. Um, and just to show, and then once you integrate that, you just take your model and you just call dynamo.optimize on it. And that is it. That's all you have to do. And then here you can uh, invoke it. So this actually uh, calls into that, that Dynamo function. And, well, this is the output already, but um, I'll go ahead and run it just so you believe me. This is running on the reference back. And so um, the, the PyTorch, one is very fast, obviously, but then the ref backend is very slow. So we'll have to wait, I think, another 10 or 20 seconds, I think. But you'll see here that when it comes, and this is why reference backend should not be used by anybody, but it's the best we have right now. And there we go, you know, the exact same result. And we are, uh, yeah, it's that simple. You know, it's just really, I mean, literally 10 lines of code here. So um, yeah, enjoy, please use this API and tell us what you want. Um, we're gonna be plugging in all the other goodies that PyTorch 2.0 brings. And um, and we'll, we're looking for as much feedback as you can give on that. So please tell, tell us what you're, trying to use this for, how you want to integrate. Um, and uh, yeah, we're all ears and are very willing to, to implement uh, whatever is needed. All right, um, let me go ahead and give this back to Ramiro. All right. Uh, yeah, thank you, Sean, for the great demo. I'm excited to see all the new functionality that Torch Dynamo will unlock in uh, Torch MLIR, as well as the simplification that it's going to cause in the code base. So that's pretty exciting. Now, I'll give a quick overview of the new LLVM update process, which we've been doing for like the last month and a half. Uh, so previously, we were very fortunate to have 
which they take care of the weekly LVM and HLO bump in towards MLA arm. However, we have since then shifted to a more community-based approach, which so the way that it looks is we have a list in the Torch MLAR wiki that has you know who in the community is in charge of which week to update LVM and MHLO. And then we just use that list to, to assign people. And then um, Ashe still gives us in the green commit tracker which LVM commit and MHLO commit to use. Um, and that's pretty much it. At the moment, we have a good amount of people helping with the update rotation. But if you would also like to get involved, you can mention it in the tracker issue linked. Um, if you, also, if you have familiarity with the update process, feel free to help out with the reviews. Up then, updating LVM will lead to a lot of debugging in Torch MLIR. So any help that we can get on that end is very deeply appreciated. And lastly, we have our monthly health checkup, which is where I ask all of you if you have any feedback or concerns or anything that affects your developer workflow that could be improved, such as the CI being too slow or reviews being too slow or debugging very, being a bit annoying. So I'll open it up for people to chime in if you have any feedback. Awesome. As usual, everything seems to be working just fine. Um, if you do have any feedback that you think about after this meeting is over, you can also just mention it on a GitHub issue, and we can work from there. Other than that, I'll open it up for any questions that people might have of the topics discussed, or if people have any new topics that they would like to bring up as well, this is a good time to do it. All right. Well, in that case, we can get some time back. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And yeah. Thanks. Thank you.